It is my great pleasure to introduce my good friend and fellow founder of SheBoot, uh, director with the Canadian Angel Media, Canadian Angel Capital Angel Network, and an investor to us at Invest Ottawa, Julia Elvidge, who will lead our panel discussion this morning. Thank you, Julia. Thank you, Sonia. Uh, and it, I really didn't know that Arlene was going to be my opening act, but this is great, right? It's just setting the stage beautifully for a great uh, group of panelists. Uh, that are local here to Ottawa. Um, so, you know, some of the things I heard Arlene say, and, and part of the reason we're here today, um, women need to start investing because men aren't uh, investing in women. I, I love that. Um, that is um, exactly uh, why uh, we want to be here today. Um, and uh, just waiting for those panelists to come on and join us. Uh, the focus of, of the rest of the morning uh, was developed uh, to support uh, the SheBoot mandate. Um, and this is something that Jennifer, uh, Sonia and I put together. And we, we, we broke this mandate into two goals. One goal was to help women founders be more prepared for the investment phase of their business uh, through workshops, coaching, financial and, and legal support and, and pitch practice, pitch practice after pitch practice after pitch practice. But we also knew it was critical to increase the number of women investing. Um, and it, it, this is important uh, so that not just for the dollars actually, uh, but to have a woman in the room when they're doing their pitch. This is, this is new folks. This is, uh, and when we say new, I'm saying it's almost like new as of 20, 20, um, maybe 2019, that there were very few women in the room when women were pitching. And, and that's part of the change that we're trying to motivate at this point and, and, and move forward. So um, I get to uh, have this incredible uh, group of founders. I've got um, a couple of uh, local women investors and um, founders. And, and we'll be bouncing back and forth between the founders and the investors so that we can kind of paint a better picture um, from both sides of this equation. Uh, after that, Jennifer Francis will jump in uh, and, and tell us a little bit more and, and do some uh, key points about angel investing to help people move forward. From a logistics standpoint, if you could put your um, questions into the Q&A, um, I'll, I'll be watching those as they pop up and try and incorporate them um, as we go forward. So let me do some introductions. Uh, I'll start with Audrey Bond. Uh, she is uh, the CEO and founder of Vault uh, and uh, a Pitch Prize winner for the first SheBoot cohort in 2020. Vault Secure Platform helps families and caregivers organize, store, and share critical information. Audrey herself recently won a significant contract to adapt this app to the needs of a large German uh, pharmaceutical um, as a medical care passport for their patients to improve patient care and outcome. Say hello, Audrey. Mm -mm. Um, and, hi. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Julia. Yeah. Um, and, and our second founder, Heather Ward, uh, president and co-founder of Hyperion Energy, uh, a clean tech company developing breakthrough carbon recycling technology that converts industrial waste, CO2 emissions into valuable minerals. Heather recently received the highest amount of angel investment ever from the Capital Angel Network. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. um, and uh, our investors, Debbie Weinstein, um, co-founder and partner of the law firm Labarge Weinstein. Uh, this firm has been working for, working for tech companies uh, from startup to multinational for almost 25 years, with Debbie herself leading hundreds of mergers and acquisitions. Um, and and I, I like the duration also of, of, of Debbie's involvement in angel investing, and we'll hear a bit more of that from her over 20 years. And finally, uh, Sandra Ng, Vice President of Teceleration Investments. Sandra is an active angel investor with the Capital Angel Network, one of the 10 2020 SheBoot investors and a limited partner in the 51 Ventures Fund. Sandra started angel investing in early 2020, yeah. and we will be hearing her perspective from the standpoint of being a little newer to the angel investment world. Excellent. 
Welcome, um, all four. Um, I'll just uh, use your name and then get you on a question. Um, and I'm going to reverse the order now and, and uh, ask um, Debbie to, to kick off and tell us, you know, how long have you been investing and what first sparked your interest in, in investing? Debbie, you're on mute. Yeah, <laughs> it's all right. Let me try that again. Good morning. Yeah. Thank you, Julia. You can hear me all right now, I assume. Yeah. Yes. All right. So thank you. I, I love uh, the attendance today and the interest in this. So this is the first time I've been asked to speak publicly about uh, the investing side of my business and my career. Uh, I left a national law firm with uh, some other lawyers to start our own firm 24 years ago, 24 years ago last month. And one of the most uh, significant reasons for leaving the national firm was I wasn't allowed to invest in my clients. And at that time, we were starting to see this was post Nortel. So this was startup nation in Ottawa in the uh, mid 90s after all the IPOs. And so I've been investing for almost 25 years um, directly. I've probably made 30 to 40 direct investments plus received uh, equity for our legal fees, but I'm going to focus today just on where I've done direct monetary investing. Um, and so I've, I've loved it. Uh, it, to me, it's been one of the critical features of my career, uh, even though I'm thought of as a lawyer. Interesting. Tell us more when you say critical features of your career, how so? Well, um, <laughs> People say, how can I be a lawyer and have the energy that I have for 35 years? It's because I've invested in companies for 25 of those years. I've learned about, I mean, think about the envy or the, the, the wonderful placement that I have is I get to see a founder day one and I get to go on a founder's journey with him or her uh, from day one to sale or IPO. And I get to do that three or 400 times in my career. Yeah. You might say, oh, now I get it. Now I know why she doesn't mind being a lawyer as well. And it is really, instead of being a very small uh, part of the eco industry of technology, it's allowed me to be at the center of the technology industry uh, because of the knowledge I've gained. It's allowed me to go onto boards. I'm on the board of OpenText, one of the largest software companies mm -hmm. in, in the country. And that is in part to the learning I've had along the path with all the founders that I've invested with and worked for. That's fair, that's fair. I, I can understand what you say there because that's one of the reasons why I'm an advisor at Invest Ottawa. I, I get to meet um, these, incredible women like Audrey and, and Heather early on in their career and, and see how that develops. And it's so much fun to, to jump on that, that's and, right. and, and see. That's a... and, and, and it's, as Arlene said, it's not about the money anymore. Uh, the investing mm -hmm. is not about the money anymore. Uh, it is, we'll get into some of the, the nitty gritty, but it's sort of a life's work of mastering uh, investment in knowledge-based companies. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So, so Sandra, can, maybe you could tell us about how you got into investing, what first sparked your interest. Um, it's much more recent, but it, I'm, I'm very intrigued to, to hear more about that. Well, uh, thanks, Julia, and hi, everyone. Um, I joined the Capital Angel Network just over a year ago, and I made my first investment about four months after joining. Um, I guess... My investment interest in angel investing is that personally, I've been investing in public equities for 25 years and had a professional career in international development. So angel investing is like a merging, it's like a marriage of two passions, um, making money and making a difference. And I, I guess I'm unafraid to say that um, I do want to make money because it's investing and not philanthropy. Yes, fair. Absolutely. Fair. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you don't, if you're not um, making, you, you, you want to win, 
too, right? You want to win with the founder, um, but it, it's a win with. It's not, um, you're definitely sort of joining the, the team, I, I find sometimes, not always. So um, I'm going to come back around to Sandra and Debbie, but I'm going to bounce to the founders. And I, I just want you to introduce yourself and, and, and just tell us a little bit more about your funding journey and how that worked. Um, Heather, I'll let you start. Thanks, Julia. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, so just quickly, uh, Hyperion Energy is a carbon recycling company, as uh, Julia mentioned in the intro. So we convert waste CO2 emissions into profitable materials. I like to say we turn dirty air into dollars. Um, it hasn't been an easy journey for our funding. Um, it's tough tech, it's hardware, it's clean tech. So requires a lot of capital, um, but we've had a lot of support from um, some of the female investors on, uh, on the panel today, and uh, as well as mentorship through Invest Ottawa. Um, so I've been really grateful for that support. Um, and so we, we sort of bootstrapped ourselves uh, early on and uh, recently closed um, over a million dollars of investment through grants and the Capital Angel Network. So really thrilled that that, uh, that tipping point, really the timing for our industry um, has, uh, has come to fruition. So um, yeah, hang in there to anybody who's raising money and thanks to uh, all of the, the great female um, investors that have believed in us and, and been supportive through that journey. Timing of, uh, Trudeau's timing was pretty good with the carbon um, tax, right? Uh yeah. Yes, that was helpful, um, as well as Elon Musk just announced a $100 million prize in carbon removal. So now everyone's asking what is carbon removal. Uh, so I don't have to kind of uh, explain that as much anymore. Um, but definitely Canada's leadership in clean tech and especially this space carbon removal. So mitigating carbon emissions that are the leading contributor to climate change. Canada leads on that. And so I think we'll start to see a lot more investment in this space. Right, right. So Audrey, uh, jump in now and, and tell us a bit more about your company and your funding journey. Good morning, everybody. Thanks, Julia. Thanks for having me. Um, so I started my journey actually 10 years ago, but truly started um, Vault two years ago to address a major um, issue in my life. Um, and somebody other had, I was looking after my aging parents and I, I didn't have a secure centralized location to store and share their vital information and communicate it with my brother and other caregivers. Um, there was nothing available that was totally secure. I really didn't want my, my data to be mined. Um, and I, um, you know, I decided that this was it. It was time to start the company. So two years ago, I decided to go out there, drop everything and okay, I'm gonna go raise some money. <laughs> Naive founder, whoa, I'm gonna go raise a million dollars on my idea. Um, well, it didn't happen that easily. Um, it did take a year, but we did raise over half a million dollars. Um, and, uh, it was, uh, and when, when we talk about angels, I have to say they truly, truly are angels that jump in and help founders start, um, businesses that probably would not have been started without their assistance. Um, and so, uh, this summer we launched Vault, which is a collaborative patient and family centric platform. Um, it enables secure information management and communication between caregivers and families and invited collaborators. And essentially our, our patent pending technology makes it easier for families and caregivers by helping them protect and organize and share life-saving information. Um, and uh, I was brought into the Invest Ottawa world about a year and a half ago. So just while I was raising the funding um, and it's been a, a wonderful experience. I'm so thankful to have met uh, Jennifer and Julia, um, especially who have been championing, championing this, um, the She Boot program and just basically championing, championing investing in female founders. That's great, okay. Thank you, Audrey. And um, jumping back to the investors, um, Sandra, maybe you could kick off. Um, how, are, how are you, um, educating yourself about angel investing? Where do you start and you know, how's it going? Um, yeah, my learning journey has included uh, lots and lots of reading, one-on-one um, uh, -on -one conversations with more experienced angel investors from the Capital Angel Network, uh, both men and women. Um, and I spent eight weeks uh, attending Venture Capital University this summer online. And of course, there's the uh, really rich experience of the learning by doing, being a part of the, uh, being a champion of Shibu. And 
I'm also a limited partner in the 51 Ventures Fund out of Calgary. And we have monthly investor learning sessions, which have been really uh, educating. And it, can you just tell us a little bit more about that fund? Because it's, it's, it's pretty interesting in itself, right? Um, yeah, well, the 51, um, you can Google them, 51.com, is a financial feminist platform out of Calgary. Uh, they have mobilized over 10,000 women, uh, uh, entrepreneurs, uh, aspiring investors, investors. Um, and there's the nonprofit side, and then there's the venture fund side. And the venture fund itself has 90% uh, women limited partners, which is incredible. And it's the first fund. It, uh, it uh, closed uh, in early 2020. And um, I encourage anybody who's interested in angel investing to, you know, look at their website. Of course, you know, I'm in Ottawa, so go Sheboot. Uh, and, <laughs> and check out the 51. They have a program in collaboration with the uh, University of Calgary that is helping women who are interested in uh, investing to sort of get uh, on that track. Um, good, good. Um, and, and there's no competition between Sheboot and the 51. I mean, I, I think they're, they're doing <laughs> different things and all the more help for women, the better. Absolutely. I, I, I I, I absolutely agree with that. I, I think uh, it's so important to be uh, uh, to be building bridges. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. So, so Debbie, you learned about this. I mean, it kind of helps that you're a lawyer, um, and, and uh, you can breeze through those agreements and stuff. But how did how did you sort of get the hang of angel investing? Uh, well, a, a lot uh, of what has just been said, I went to every event back in the 90s I could go to. I went to every cocktail party. Uh, I networked with as many people as I could. Um, and, and that wasn't just to raise, uh, uh, again, work on my lawyering side. It was actually to get ingrained in and be part of uh, of of what was going on in Ottawa and elsewhere. I, I got onto the board of, you know, what's now Invest Ottawa. Um, and so I just really embedded myself into the industry as, as even though I didn't get an engineering or software degree, I, my background is math and economics. Um, but some of the surprising things, I, you know, I'm on my, we're on our third, I'd say wave of uh, uptick since I started this in the, let's say in the mid nineties, um, uh, obviously around the bubble and then bust uh, in the early 2000s up to the recession in 08. And now we're again probably at the highest peak I've seen of. Uh, I know the I know the dollars and cents aren't showing it in new BC investing, but the 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 money I'm seeing float around uh, in M and A and other things is mind boggling during COVID. And I think what's been um, you know very surprising to me is there's no template. Um, it is about who you invest in, but it's not just about who you invest in. It's about the timing of that investment. And we'll get into some of that uh, later. But generally, what's been most surprising to me is how much you can make and how much you can lose. Uh, <laughs> and I really, I, I really um, recommend to people out there, it's just like anything else uh, as you're um, beginning to build your portfolio once you have some cash and you want to diversify um, there's a reason why no, uh, you know, limited partnerships uh, or VCs don't put in more than 10% of the fund into one, one, any one investment. There are reasons why they uh, set money aside for each of those, each of those uh, target companies and they don't invest everything up front. Um, you've got to see how it goes. There, there, there's, it's, a, it's a very slow, uh, you have to be extremely patient. Uh, and you have to take a long term view and, you know, every investment like I, I'm listening to our two founders, I want to invest in both of these companies right now. Okay. But you have to be patient, you have to be patient, you have to ask yourself a lot of questions, which we'll get into. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, thank you, Debbie. Um, there are some questions coming up. Up. Uh, I, I'm gonna just pop back to the founders and, and I'll um, just hit the questions that are on the Q&A uh, panel right now. Um, so uh, I'd like to uh, start with you, Audrey, and, and just, um, you know, talk a little bit more about, you know, what difference does it make to you um, that you do have uh, women involved in angel investing, you know, from your experience, what, 
Do you, do you care? Does it matter? Yeah, it, of course I do. Um, why, of course, I should be able to answer that. Um, you know, it's funny when I look at my cap table, cap table being the investors that came in uh, in our friends and family round um, in the beginning, it's of the, of the 13 people that invested in our company, um, 10 are women. Um, and I think that's very telling. And uh, I didn't realize it until I sat down and took a look at it. And I thought, wow, um, these women really were there to champion and support um, my vision, my mission. Um, they believed in me. They believed in, in what I wanted to build. Um, and not to say that the guys didn't either, because they did. Um, they really, truly did. Um, but I just found that when I was talking about the struggles that I was having and, and what my vision was, they, they, the women just seemed to really, really get it. Um, and in fact, I, I found there was a few women that invested and it was their very first time ever investing um, uh, as an angel investor. And um, I think that, uh, I, again, I'm, I'm very loyal and very thankful to these investors that came in and, um, you know, I always have them right there in the back of my mind, you know, making sure that I'm doing them justice, I'm doing them right, you know, that I want to, I want to give them a great return ROI on their investment. Um, but it, it does mean a lot. It means a lot having as well, like Julia, um, uh, people like yourself and Jennifer Francis and, um, that are more than just investors, that they're investors and champions. Um, and, uh, and, you know, elevating basically all our founders together and, and having a friendship, for instance, with Heather Ward. Um, um, it's been just a fantastic journey um, supporting each other. Well, that, 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 and it's a good, good point. I mean, that, that the women's founder network is pretty strong too, right here in Ottawa. I don't, I don't know elsewhere, but I mean, I do, I'm, I really love uh, the women supporting women um, at that founder level as well. Um, and I see that. Um, so, you know, go gals, because it's, it's really uh, amazing to see that energy and, and that uplifting uh, that goes on. I need to add to that, Julia. It is, <laughs> the founder journey is such a lonely journey, to be honest. Mm -hmm. It's it's a really crazy thing to to change your life and to to start you know a tech startup. Um, and as there are very few women that that make that crazy leap, um, so to be able to share that with others that are in the arena with you and that are going through this at the same time, um, it's 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 so empowering. Okay. And and Heather, do you do you have something to add to that? Um... Again, the question was more about, you know, what difference does it make that women are involved in angel investing or not? What's your point of view? Yeah, absolutely. I think that um, the women that typically are investing are trailblazers themselves and have been successful entrepreneurs in many cases and understand um, some of the barriers and challenges that are unique to women founders, especially women in tech, I would say. Um, so, so Julia and Jennifer and Sandra, um, great to have um, these powerful females as investors uh, in our company, as well as people like our patent agent who jumped in and invested, um, who's also uh, a really great uh, female to know, woman to know in Ottawa. Um, and just on the, the peer uh, to peer networking and, and the, I guess, contacts through investors through that as well. Um, just want to give a shout out to Invest Ottawa for uh, helping us start Ladies Who Launch. Uh, and Audrey's part of that. And Julia, you've been involved and Sonia championing that. So that's been really great to, uh, I love those numbers of the increase in female founders at Invest Ottawa over the last year and hope to keep bumping those up. So um, that's, that's a whole ecosystem uh, that's been moving forward that includes, um, includes those trailblazers. So really uh, grateful for that support. Excellent. Excellent. Well, thank you, Heather. Let, I'm switching back to the investors now, and I'm going to let you choose uh, whether you want to answer these questions. I'm, I'm going to the uh, q and uh, You guys can read them as well, um, if you'd like. And Gabrielle, she's asked, uh, a lot of you have mentioned really amazing initiatives, both in social and environmental contexts. Would any of you identify with the label impact investor? Why or why not? Debbie or Sandra? I, uh, I don't, I don't know what that term means, <laughs> but but if if it's saying that it has to have a social or impact on the environment, um, I'd say no. I mean, I've got a number of investments in carbon and in clean tech, but that's I'm not that that's a a, a small part, and no. I haven't moved my investing thesis to only that because 
Uh, I primarily invest in, in tech companies, knowledge-based companies. So uh, AI, security, and, and certain areas. Um, and I'm not focused on that. Mm -hmm. Um, I can add not, a bit. Not exclusively. Yeah. 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 Uh, I can add a bit onto that. You know, I've been refining my investment thesis. It's my first year and I've been refining my investment thesis. And I, I do, a, I have a preference for female founders. I have a preference for underrepresented founders because I am underrepresented. Um, I like companies that uh, are in sectors that have tailwinds at the global macro environment like clean tech. And I do have a preference for companies that have a positive social or environmental impact. Thinking of, you know, the ESG type goals uh, of the United Nations. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I come from that because I, I come from an international development background, from a very global background. And I have, you know, seen all sorts of situations which have impacted me personally, you know, degradation, environmental degradation in Asia and in, in Central America and Africa. Um, and so it's important to me. So I, I have integrated that uh, as a part of my investment thesis going forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I'll add to that too, because you know, I've been investing for about two years, I guess a little over two years now. I, um, I track what how much of my dollars go to female founders that is the biggest thing i track um and i i've said to myself that i want more than half um, of my dollars to go to female founders um I'm, I'm working on the you know taking that a little higher but i i i also i get i get pulled in to um great ideas, right? I mean, that's what we're all looking for, for, you know, somebody that's uh, got the leadership um, qualities and, and has found a niche um, that is untouched. Um, not, and, and that makes a big difference at that point. So uh, I'm going to go on to the next question. And what do in, uh, what we do in, uh, my, I'm, my sound is weird right now, right? I'm, my sound. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, um, wh what do investors um, suggest if, if you have relatively small chunk of money, say only 5,000, but wanna get into angel investing and in startups uh, that you believe in? Any suggestions, uh, Sandra, Debbie? Uh. Well, first, um, as you are probably all aware, uh, one, need, uh, one needs to be an accredited investor uh, before you can make an investment. And there are about 20 different ways the government of Canada can qualify you. So when you're an accredited investor and you have a small amount of money, um, I, and that's the amount of money that you can afford to lose because angel investing is a high risk asset class. I would suggest that uh, you get uh, educated about angel investing and develop a level of comfort with this risk and its potential for superior returns. And then you find a, a way to define an investment thesis for yourself and what kind of values that are important to you. And then just wire the money. Debbie, I'm going to, um, uh, this one's directed right at you. Um, Deborah, um, thank you for uh, bringing this one up. Can you read it, Debbie? Can you read it? So can you read it to me? Yeah, Don't sure, see it. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. Um, Debbie, given the, the very accommodating current climate for uh, initial angel A round investment. What does that mean for an organization like Heather's? A like large, Heather. potentially large capital needs for hardware. Well, you know, for Heather, it would be she's she's got her angels. That's great. Now Heather's got to really build out her network because what she needs to then, and I and I have no doubt because uh, I know this area is hot, and I know that a lot of investors uh, and funds from traditional areas of, of technology 
of software and hardware are moving into the clean tech space. So you have a lot, of, you'll know Heather, they, there's a lot of big names in the space. And so for Heather, the, the goal would be to keep building her advisory board. I don't, I don't mean that in a formal way, but her network, her advisors, um, um, uh, to, to not only focused on the business at hand, which is the developing the recycling technology, but also the business of raising money. Uh, you know, it's I, I often say this to people who are about to go public, but applies equally to any uh, entrepreneur who needs to raise money. You really have two businesses, the business of the product or solution you're selling and the business of raising money. And that's really the, the founder and CEO's primary responsibility because without the second, there is no first. And so when I look at her space, I'd be right away starting to really pinpoint uh, other small uh, tech companies, how they're getting money. I'd have a flow chart going and a matrix going of follow the money. It's all about following the money. And in, and in this space, there is going, there is a lot of money and there's going to be a lot more. And Heather, um, do and Heather, wanna... um, do you want to Sorry, Julie, I echoed a little bit there. Yeah, no, great, um, great advice, um, Debbie. Thanks so much. And I think we're continually, even when we were closing our angel round, looking at our first equity round and soft circling and starting those conversations, um, many of those conversations take a long time to come to fruition. Um, but we're, we're pleased to be speaking to some VCs in that space and particularly uh, ones that have a mandate to support female founders. Um, but you're right, it's it's a capital intense industry. Um, we were lucky just to get into Techstars Energy in Norway. Unfortunately, I didn't get to go to Norway for three months doing it all remote early mornings, but um, that's a fantastic global network uh, that we've also tapped into now, as well as the X, X Prize network. So um, great advice and, and I'll, I'll, keep, uh, I'll keep building that up. Well, and you, you also have some great support, right, from the SDTC, right, uh, Sustainable Development. Um, that That is a, a, another avenue that uh, helps pay for some of those capital costs, right? Yes, there's been a seed fund through uh, some of the, the regional innovation centers like Invest Ottawa to support clean tech development. I think um, we see the, the Canadian government investing heavily in that um, because of our energy sector and, of course, just the, you know, the uh, increasing, uh, you know, the change in the U.S. administration now and moving towards the Paris Climate Agreement goals. Um, also, just companies like Shopify here in Ottawa getting into the sustainability space and investing in carbon offsets, not just planting trees, but now investing in technologies like ours, uh, mm -hmm. which are needed to scale rapidly in order to mitigate climate change. So we have all kinds of different factors um, coming into play there. Uh, it's an exciting time to be in the industry. And, and again, I'm really um, grateful to have those strong female mentors and champions uh, to help support that journey. Now, I, I'm going to surprise you with um, a question. Back to the founders, three words to describe what kind of investor you look for. Okay, I'm going to let you think about that and jump back with uh, to the investors. And, and uh, Corinne asked the question, um, outside of the initial angel investment, how much time do you spend to get to know uh, your founders? As someone who's still growing my company, I have a time issue and concerned about losing some of my focus. How would you recommend I approach angel investing? And Sandra, I'm gonna let you kickstart that one. Um, well, honestly, not very much right now. It's been a year, so it's early days. Um, I My deal flow comes mostly through the Capital Angel Network. So we have uh, monthly meetings, we have uh, pitches, and then we have deep dives, uh, which means we spend about three hours with the founders. Um, so four, five hours before I make a decision. Wow, yeah. It seems like not a lot of time, right? I mean, I, I, I know how you... Yeah, it's, it's not a lot of time, but you know, Having spent many years uh, working in, you know, strategy and evaluations, mm -hmm. I've constructed all these charts and graphs for my due diligence process. But, you know, I'm often surprised by the fact that 
uh, the ultimate decision to invest is much more personal. Okay, I agree. I agree. It's you, 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 you learn to calibrate your gut, right? And then you have to gut check. So you is the way I think of it. Yeah. Um, but uh, uh, by doing some due diligence to to make sure it's working. Okay, we got lots of questions coming up. Um, Debbie, do you want to uh, add to that one? Um, I, I don't spend, uh, you know, as investors, the more time you, you spend with your company and the founders, the less time they can spend on the company. So we're, as investors, we're getting more time we end unless we're adding value. One of the things I've seen uh, most compelling from, uh, from some of my investments is, is how my founders stay in touch with me and how they stay in touch generally with, uh, you know, the investors. So again, again, I'm not talking legal rights here, but there's nothing better than receiving either a monthly or quarterly uh, update uh, email on uh, the news of the nation. I can think of a couple of angels I've recently invested in, uh, one in uh, in Heather's space that is uh, phenomenal. I know who their channel partners are. I know who their prospective investors they're talking to are, and they've just done, an, I, I, you know, I, we knew they were shifting some focus and they really um, provide us with the kind of information that would be akin to sitting on the board every quarter. Not, not, not the numbers and, and operational details because it's still in the early startup, but the, the big strategic moves. So I feel that an, uh, an entrepreneur that can, can communicate on a timely basis and a periodic basis as though they were making the pitch for the first time you know, don't wait to tell me about the business when you want my money. Tell me about it months ahead before the next round so that I remain, in, you know, engaged, uh, but not in the way and uh, that I get excited about an opportunity to put another round of money in. I like that, Debbie. I, it, I it, like that, Debbie. I, it, it, it's really true that um, it, being able to just sort of hear regularly from the, the founders uh, that you've invested in is fantastic it just goes you kind of can glance through it and say oh yeah it's okay yeah they're moving forward and and it it, it keeps you in touch not knowing is much worse <laughs> makes you wonder so we we do have a lot of uh great questions coming up and i'm gonna try and address them all i'm sorry i think some of these will be addressed by heather uh, jennifer's um francis's talk uh, coming up immediately after this we're down to about four minutes and I, I'm going to uh, go back to the founders and uh, ask, um, you know, their three words, uh, what they look for an investor. I'm going to throw the same rapid question at Debbie and Sandra about founders. What are the three words you look for um, that describe the founder you're looking for? Um, and we'll close with that. But um, in the meantime, I do want to just touch quickly on uh, Deborah's question about what do you expect? Do you, do you expect to see a dip in funding post uh, COVID? Um, so, you know, we, we, we've had a, there was a dip in, in funding um, mid last year. And, and I think we've, we've gotten out of that. Do we expect another funding dip post COVID? Um, any, uh, Debbie or, or Sandra? My answer is there should not be. Uh, if you asked me this a year ago when we were all flying back from wherever we were to get home before the lockdown, yeah. we thought the world yeah. the world was falling in. In the knowledge based industry, if you're not you know if you're not in the cert, we know the bottom of the K, you know the hospitality, travel, etc. But if you're if you're out of those industries, uh, the amount of money people are making right now uh, from M and A uh, events, and I'm I'm including angels from uh, secondary sales of companies that have become unicorns, private unicorns, is astonishing and mind boggling. Interest rates will remain very low unless there's really a supply, you know, a supply push because of COVID that, that then increases prices. And so the only place for money to go is things like private equity uh, and the stock market. And the better the stock market, the more likely people will get into private investing. So. Uh, there should not be uh, a slowdown. In fact, um, my worry is it's too frothy. As I said before, the multiples I'm seeing on sales of companies are astonishing. 
Uh, I hope it levels a bit, and uh, and and in, if it does, we'll you know we'll have another another number, a few years of uh, robust investment opportunities. Thank you, Debbie. So uh, quickly, Audrey uh, first, and then Heather. Three words that describe the best investor for you. Asking me to only say three words is like near impossible if you know me. Um, <laughs> That's off. So yeah, go. <laughs> okay. Well, there's two kinds of investors: people that are actively involved and people that aren't really necessarily actively involved. But for sure, for all of them, belief. I want them to believe in what we're doing. Uh, we believe in what we're doing, and we want the investors to believe as well. Um, I want them, all of them, to be open. Uh, where we started a year and a half ago, two years ago, slightly different now, but to trust in what we're doing as well. Um, so belief, open, and uh, trust. Trust. Thank you, Heather. Okay, I'll be really quick. So impact, I think we mentioned, um, Arlene mentioned this in her in her opening purpose driven, um, supporting our larger mission, uh, smart money. So experience, um, somebody like Julia, who can offer us all of the background with licensing patents and all of that kind of great stuff. And network, as Debbie mentioned, uh, that can help us extend and grow the company. Perfect. Thank you. I second those. those are great. Uh, Sandra, real quick. Three words about a founder. I have two, uh, integrity and grit. Good, I like it. And finally, Debbie. Oh, okay. Uh, you need to unmute, Debbie, just. Yes. Comes of the, of, of the company and the business outcomes, so. I actually look at the entre at the founders' uh, timing, timing of the market, timing of the opportunity. Um, I look at the founders' addressable market. So, is this a big play? Is this a small play? Is it a short term? Is it a long term? Yeah. And then, lastly, yeah. I, I look at team. team. So, team may be just the founder, uh, but I look at um, the team's vision, experience and all, all the other things that go into judging a great founder. In addition, the personal qualities go without saying, integrity, values, um, uh, transparency, without that, you don't even get to the first you know, first question. Thank you so thank much, you Debbie. So much. And um, so thank you very much to Audrey, Heather, Sandra, and Debbie for all the wisdom you've just imparted, um, really. Very happy. I, I want to make sure we get some time with Jennifer and hear a little bit of some of the facts and figures around angel investing. Thank you again. Excellent. Thank you to all panelists. A rich dialogue, so much actionable insight and inspiration. And with that goal in mind, it's time for some 101 education on angel investing with the chair of the Capital Angel Network and our Shibu co-founder, director at Invest Ottawa, Jennifer Francis. Thank you, Sonia, and uh, thank you. That was an awesome panel. Uh, great to hear from uh, both uh, funders and founders on uh, the investment landscape here. Um, and also uh, just an inspiring uh, talk this morning with Arlene. So hopefully all of you are uh, thinking now about being angel investors and uh, to follow Sandra's advice, uh, just wire that money. <laughs> so. I'm going to uh, talk briefly uh, about uh, what it takes to become an angel investor and a couple of things that you can do as next steps. Um, so next slide, please. So first of all, uh, Capital Angel Network, we're the um, uh, largest angel group here in Ottawa. Our mission is to make Ottawa the best place for all entrepreneurs to launch and scale a global business and for all qualified investors to access top investment opportunities. And I put the focus on all. Uh, we talked a little bit earlier about um, the work that we've done with Invest Ottawa over the last three years um, with the Angel Breakfast to increase the number of female founders. Uh, but we really want to grow this uh, opportunity uh, for you know founders, all races, all genders, um, to be able to find, uh, find the capital that they need to grow and build successful businesses. Next slide. So a little bit about Ken. Uh, we've got uh, 50 Ottawa area angels working together on uh, deal flow and deals uh, within the region. Uh, we've invested over 35 million uh, into the region since 2009. Uh, we're currently at 20% female angels. Uh, Julia and my goal is to get us, and, and the rest of the, 
the organization is to get us to 50% uh, female angels. Uh, so got a little bit of work to do, but I'm sure we'll get there. And I'm sure we've got some great, uh, uh, great potential angels on the call today. And um, since we started this initiative to grow the diversity of Capital Angel Network, um, we've been able to build a, a portfolio and we have 11 currently active portfolio companies that have been founded by women, um, which is uh, a great statistic. And you've heard from two of them here today on the exciting businesses that they're, uh, that they're building with us. Next. So what is an angel? Um, you know, I think Sandra talked uh, about this a little bit, but an angel investor is an individual who provides uh, personal capital uh, for a business startup. There are regulatory requirements. I've got a few of, of them here. There are other ways to qualify, but these are the main ways, which is income or assets are your two ways of qualifying. And in Canada, um, to be an angel investor, you really have to satisfy this and you'll be signing a form each time you do an investment to say you, you qualify. Uh, we did touch during the uh, panel on friends and family investment. Uh, friends and family is when uh, you're either related to or friends with uh, the founder that you're investing in. Uh, if you are friends and family, you do not have to be an accredited investor. Uh, you just have to sign the form that says you really do know these people. You really are either a friend or a family. Um, and you need to be able to uh, face each other at the uh, Christmas table or the Hanukkah table or whatever table um, if the investment doesn't work out as these remain high risk uh, uh, investments. Next. So why become an angel? I mean, we've talked a lot about this uh, this morning uh, with the talk with Orlean and then the panel. Um, really investment with impact. And um, when I use impact, uh, I use it broadly, um, you know, that uh, you know, whether it's an impact area like climate change or healthcare, or, um, you know, um, you're looking at um, specific types of founders like female founders or uh, BIPOC founders, et cetera. Uh, but it's also impact because you can see your money, um, you know, whether it's a security firm or any other type of tech firm that you might be investing in, you can see your money translating into jobs and growth and companies, successful companies, right? So you're having an impact no matter what sector you're investing in as you watch those companies grow. Uh, it's, I find it super interesting. Uh, I just love hearing about, um, you know, uh, multiple businesses every single month, new ideas, uh, new things that people come up with, uh, meeting great founders every month. Um, you know, I don't invest in everybody I see because, you know, <laughs> I talk to hundreds of companies in a year, um, but it, it's just super interesting. It's a lot of fun uh, doing angel investing and very rewarding. And, you know, as you invest, uh, you can also mentor and help uh, the maturation of new entrepreneurs and new business opportunities. And I just want to say, you know, studies show that women earn higher rates of return than men uh, with angel investing. And I think that goes to one of the comments in the chat. And I don't know if everyone was reading the chat. Um, you know, that, uh, you know, some of the female angels can ask, you know, really hard questions, um, really in depth. And I think some of the things like the detail orientation of many women, not all women, but many women and, um, you know, the knowledge and the background and the care that people take uh, just leads to, to those better returns from angel investing. And we need more women investors. I mean, we've talked about these stats already, but um, you know, in 2021, only 2.3% of VC funding went to women led firms. Um, you know, only 17% of angel investors are female and we need to really increase that. And the situation with VCs is, is even worse. And as Arlene said, you know, it's, it's very difficult as a woman to raise a fund. We need to make that easier. We need to get more women in the game um, so that we can have more and larger funds uh, like Arlene Dickinson's, like the 51 Sandpiper Ventures and other female, um, female funds in Canada. Next. So how do I become an angel? Um, a couple of things you can do to get started. Um, one is, uh, you know, you're always welcome to attend a Capital Angel Network session as a guest. You can get in touch with uh, Nolan Beanlands, who's uh, on the chat, uh, myself, Julia, uh, to get invited to uh, a session as a guest, or if you already know a member, to come as a guest and just check us out, see what it's like. 
Uh, we do hold a couple of times a year uh, angel one-on-one -on -one sessions. Those are um, much longer, more in-depth in uh, sessions on how to become an angel, what's involved, uh, the gory details of uh, deals and deal structure and things like that so that you can get the confidence that you need to, to start doing investments. And you can just join Capital Angel Network and just get started. Um, you know, jump right in and uh, and do it. And why would you want to join an angel group? One, it's a great way to get started, um, but there's a lot of benefits to being part of a group. So one is to learn from existing angels. Uh, if you join a group, you'll find that there's a mix of experienced and new angels um, and angels from different backgrounds. So, you know, some might be from law or finance. Uh, others come from technology, from medical, uh, different areas. So when you're looking at deals, uh, you get a diversity of thought and perspective on the deal, which can be really useful. And many of the angels will help talk you through, um, you know, what their investment thesis is, how they make decisions, which is great. Uh, another advantage of a group, and I think there was a question in the, in the chat on, um, you know, what if I don't have a lot of money um, set aside uh, to get started with my angel investing. Well, when you start with a group, um, you know, the entrepreneur uh, might need a lot of money, but each individual investor doesn't have to supply all of that money. Um, so you can join a group and you can make smaller investments as part of a group investment into a deal. Uh, and many founders are happy to take small checks as well as the larger checks um, in order to get investors in the door. And it's a good way to share the work of finding good investments uh, and to get the deal flow uh, that you need um, to be successful as an angel investor. Next. So another way to get involved uh, is through SheBoot. Uh, so we announced yesterday uh, SheBoot, which is an investment ready boot camp uh, for women founders. Um, we've started our second cohort and you heard from a couple of people that were in the first cohort uh, during the panel. Next. So, you know, this is a women-led business boot camp that helps women entrepreneurs get investment ready, designed by women investors for women founders and supported by women leaders uh, from all sectors to provide the expertise uh, that founders need to successfully raise money. Next. So how do you get involved? Um, well, this is a six week boot camp. It'll be running in fall 2021. Uh, applications are open now. So if you're a founder on the call, uh, go check out uh, Invest Ottawa uh, to get the application and get started. Um, if you're a potential angel or expert in your area, uh, there's a number of other ways to get involved. So one is uh, mentors. So we provide mentors and coaches for the uh, 10 founders that are part of the boot camp. We've got a curriculum of workshops and we look for leaders uh, in those areas to run the workshops. We have shadow boards that continue to work with the founders uh, for a year after the boot camp. So you can join a shadow board. Uh, you can join as an investor. So each investor uh, puts in $10,000 for the pitch award. Um, we've guaranteed a minimum of 100,000 uh, from 10 different angels, uh, but uh, sky's the limit. So if you wanna join up as an investor, um, we would be happy to increase the purse size. The larger the prize, the more successful the founder can be um, as she grows her business. And we'll be running a SheBoot information session. We don't have the date set yet, but we will uh, communicate that SheBoot information session to all of you uh, so that you can join and learn more about how to get involved. Next. So really what is uh, this all about? It's about women investing in women. And uh, with that, I'd like to open it up to questions. Checking no questions in the Q and A. Well, I'm going to throw out one of the questions that I had was uh, right. uh, Peng Sang asked, uh, "When do you typically see return on your investment?" Yeah. So when do you typically see? So the average return uh, would be in three to five years. So this is not a get rich quick uh, scheme. Um, it typically takes three to five years. Having said that. Um, one of the larger exits at Capital Angel Network, um, uh, and unfortunately, I was not an investor in this one, um, but uh, you know, it was six months um, from the time of the investment to the exit, and it was a multifold return in six months. It was a very successful uh, acquisition that was done. Um, so you will find angels that have had uh, those very, very quick, very successful wins, um, but 
uh, on average, it'll be three to five years and it can be up to 10 years before you get uh, an exit event, uh, whether it's a public offering or an acquisition um, that gets your, your money back out. I wanted to add too, when you were talking about angel investing and, and, and you know, investing in, in Shibut, one of the things I found uh, when talking to the, the people that had never invested before, but invested in Shibut and, and put $10,000 towards that was they said it was a great learning. It was kind of a, a gradual learning and they, they did it over time, but uh, they, they learned a lot about the process and it was easy. So, yeah. And so there's a question in the chat. Um, you know, I have friends that have the means, but not the time. Um, so how do you get involved in angel investing? Uh, so I would say if you don't have the time, uh, a group becomes even more important because you can rely on other people in the group to do a lot of the work for you. Um, the one thing I would suggest if you have means and not time is um, that you spend some time at the beginning to build up trust um, because you're going to be writing checks based on work that other people do. Um, and it's important that you know the people that you're relying on. Uh, and that you trust the people that you're relying on so that uh, when you're writing the checks, um, that you're comfortable with your decision and you can live with whatever the outcome is um, of, that, uh, of that decision, good, good or bad, um, as not every investment works out perfectly. Um, next question, do you feel other nations are more advanced in Canada with respect to presence of women as entrepreneurs, investors, and in innovation? If yes, what are they doing better than Canadians? Um, so uh, one of the examples there is the US. Uh, I would not say the US is doing particularly better than Canada. Uh, that 2.8% number is a North America number uh, that dropped to 2.3%. So um, very similar between uh, Canada and the US. The US does generally just have more money, uh, particularly Silicon Valley. I would say Canada actually looks very much like the US, excluding California. Um, as California is just sort of its own unique ecosystem. There are countries in the world um, where women have much greater presence in STEM uh, than in North America and Central Europe. And uh, that does lead to more women being involved in the innovation ecosystem in those countries. Um, and you'll see that, um, you know, Eastern Europe, um, India, China, you will see more women in STEM and more women involved in innovation companies as a result of that. Um, and that's not a unique issue to Canada, but it is Canada, US, Central Europe that have, uh, have fewer women in those areas. One more question. Are there good books about how to do due diligence, investing for dummies? Are there good books? Yeah, so um, at Capital Angel Network, we, um, we provide a book called uh, Angel 101 Investing. It's from NACO, which is the National Angel Organization in Canada. Uh, yep, <laughs> and Julia has a copy of it, handy. Um, so that's a good uh, general, general guide. Um, there are several other books uh, on, um, on angel investing. Um, I would say my own experience, and I've been angel investing for six or seven years now, um, I just got started. Um, you know, I, I wrote my first check uh, based on the advice of a friend, and then I joined an angel group um, and uh, invested as part of the group. Um, and I haven't done a lot of reading, but I did do mergers and acquisitions in my career. So you get used to, you know, very long TD checklists as part of M&A processes, but um but there are that, uh, there's also, uh, Sandra talked about going on courses. There are courses available. There's uh, courses from female funders and, uh, um, and uh, other ways that you can learn as well. All right, I don't see any other questions. I don't either. I All think. Right. Perhaps two minutes to nine. I, so I was just going to say <laughs> we're, we're off the roll with respect to concluding on time. I want to say thank you to all of our partners, investors, champions, founders, 
so many people have supported our journey in helping to enable and accelerate the growth and success of more women-owned business and female founders in our ecosystem. I'm very grateful to Jennifer and Julia. You're not only champions and partners, you're good friends. And thank you for being such strong advocates and champions for our shared goals. SheBoot is a program that is delivered and created by women founders, investors, uh, and entrepreneurs for women founders in our ecosystem. Erin Siegmiller, I know you are with us. A huge shout out for all that you do to deliver this program. So much heavy lifting from Erin and more than 50 women mentors, shadow board members, and investors who make it happen. We're very grateful. We will be promoting SheBoot call for applications broadly. We had 54 last year. We want to far exceed that this year, and we will be promoting promoting broadly through Invest Ottawa, as well as the Capital Angel Network and sharing a press release this morning. We invite you to please amplify. The more we do together, the more we will support and drive that dial to get more women founded, funded, and growing their companies, scaling them right here in Ottawa and Eastern Ontario. Thank you very much, everyone. International Women's Week continues. We have another 10 days of programming. Visit investottawa.ca backslash IWW. Thank you all very much for joining us. Thank, Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>